My name is Needles. I am a multi-platinum Grammy Award winning producer. I um, am from Lansing, I'm originally from Lansing, Michigan, but I live in Atlanta. And I produce for a little bit of everybody, so from rappers like 50 Cent to uh, singers like Jeremiah and Bruno Mars and and I've uh, also worked with BT, MTV, you know, work with all different types of artists, which I'm actually really proud of. And just working with a whole bunch of different genres. So yeah, I've, I've been doing it for about 15 years now. I come from a DJing background. I started out just DJing in high school and DJing in, uh, in college. And while I was there, I was like, ah, I don't see a future in DJing long term. So I, I decided to go I wanted to go on the business side, you know, of music, and I went to school for that. I went to music business school. I went to NYU, and while I was there, I had an internship with uh, Puff Daddy's label. I quickly decided while interning there, like, oh, I don't want to be on the business side either. And uh, this was all around the time I kind of start dabbling in production, and I just really concentrated on production for a few years and kind of got good and met the right people at the right time, and that's what led to 15 years of doing it. When you're starting out new, there's so many baby, baby uh, steps. I mean, I've known, I mean, I went from selling beats for like shoes to like, you know, doing stuff for, that's on TV. You know, that was big. Like my first placement was like a Rap City uh, for BET. It's a show, it was a pretty prominent show back then. Um, I did the theme music for that, and then, um, my first like commercial release was with this group called the Rough Riders, which was a pretty big group at the time. We had DMX and Eve and all these people. And so, um, yeah, I did a, song, a couple songs in that album and me just walking down the street in my neighborhood in Harlem at the time and hearing somebody play my music really loud in their car, that was, that was a success to me. You know, that, that was my first success. But then, I've, like I said, I've gone on to having the number one song in the world in 2011 and it doesn't get much bigger than that you know so I'm, I'm definitely blessed when, when it comes to that you know that's been many hours um you know working on my craft but it was something i had a passion for something that like i really was in love with doing it you know and so um it didn't feel like hard work it just felt like i was just really digging into something that i really like doing you know I think a lot of times people get discouraged um, when money come, when money doesn't come in and you don't see much progress. But I think just knowing that um, if you work at something for ten years straight, you, technically you're supposed to be a pro at it, you know. And a lot of times that's when all the successes come. And you know, ten years in, you know, so can you hang in there and struggle and get better and surround yourself with people that are better than you? ask the right questions, meet the right people, and have a good attitude, a lot of those things contributed to me, you know, doing it for this long, you know. I started out really just being the guy that was just really making the music and then, you know, sending it off and then the rapper would rap on it and I was just fortunate enough to work with a lot of rappers that were doing good jobs over songs that I just produced which is really just beat making at the time. But over the years, I've kind of grown into my own and been in situations where I'm literally, you know, t obviously it's helping the artist develop whatever vision they have for a song. I'm, um, you know, I'm really, really hands-on with not only the, the, uh, the producer, but the artist as well. Like, ah, you can do it better. You can sing this better. You can do this better. And, you know, I, I pick apart records and I'm real, I'm kind of anal about, you know, everything just has to be perfect for me. And, and so, uh, so yeah, producing for me is just really taking control of a record and making sure that the artist is getting the song that they want. Because ultimately, you know, you, that's what you, we're here for, to make sure the artist you know, has a vision and, and the label gets a hit as well at the same time. I worked in my home studio it, for about three years, and I just sold that house. So I have a, another studio being built right now um, in, a separate, in a separate place outside of my house, which is 
it's it actually I, I hope it I think it will work better for me because even though the studio was in my house it was convenient because I didn't really have to go far but then at the same time it didn't feel like work all the time it felt like I was trapped in my house you know what I mean and like sometimes you need to like leave your environment to kind of switch things up in your brain it's like okay I'm going to work right now and I'm looking forward to that again, you know, looking forward to leaving my house as opposed to just being there all day. Because people will come over all the time, you know, they're, and they'll come all times of night, and it's just like, then my kids will come in sometimes, and I'm like, look, this is a professional studio here, and so um, I'm building a new house as well, and uh, I'm sure I'll have something small there, but for the most part, I'll work, you know, off-site in another studio. The one a uh, piece of software that I use pretty much consistently throughout my career is called MPC, and it's uh, it's like a hybrid uh, hardware software. So, well, in my big studio, I, I have like a lot of you know outboard gear, um, like a combination of stuff here and downstairs. But for the house, I probably wouldn't. I would try to keep it light, even though I'm like a super like gearhead. I try to get the best speakers, and I'm like, man. Uh, I need some smaller monitors, but now I'm trying to find the best small monitors out there, and I'm, it's, I'm just crazy with it, you know. I did uh, this guy named Jeremiah. It's a song called We, <laughs> actually, and that song did really well in the States. They, they played it over here as well. Or It went number one urban and number one rhythmic in the United States. So that was a big record that came out last year, and then I have a new record from a new artist that's starting to climb up the charts. The guy's name is uh, PNB Rock. And he's like a rapper, kind of like a rapper-singer guy. But um, he has something interesting going on. And I, I, think, I think the song will do pretty well as well. So I like working with new artists because one, it's not a lot of headache all the time. It's, it's pretty easy transaction. And you get to be creative and do, you know, you don't have to conform to someone else's uh, vibe all the time, you know. I just basically gave him a background on what I did um, or what I do and also you know how a typical session start uh, goes from finding out who the artist is, preparing the previous day, what I like to do, um, making sure I have the staff like the engineers and have just everything in order for the for the artist to be comfortable and just put them in a like a comfortable space where they're ready to work, you know, and that's really important. And I was just telling them how people skills and um, just the artist having a good experience while they're in your presence, that's, that means more than any music, anything, because they'll keep coming back and you'll develop a relationship and stuff like that. Um, I also told them that, you know, in with engineering, you know, definitely have a personality, have, have a personable relationship with the people you're working with, but you also got to be very quick with what you're doing. I think that's the name of the game, especially when you're cutting vocals with people. It's like they want stuff done quick, so you have to be on it like that. You know?